What's good everybody? Welcome to Life on Beagle Road. Courtney is gone again. like it's been a while since we had a chance to talk and since I know you all love my random thoughts I figured why not let's do it why am I out here carving a spoon with an axe and a knife well it's fall officially and that's my favorite time to pull out the carving tools this here is a Robin Wood tools axe it's a, a carver's axe it's actually shipped here from England and it's handmade. It's one of my favorite tools that I'm still learning how to use. I'm not especially great at it, but it's like everything else in life. You can't just pick it up and expect to be great. Like you've got to take some time and practice. My knife, I actually upgraded. So the first time I ever talked about carving knives, because Robbie wanted to start learning how to carve, and I figured, well, me too, let's do it. After that video, a viewer actually recommended these uh, Mora knives and he was dead on. These knives are fantastic. I've carved at least 15, 20 spoons, and I haven't sharpened it since. It just stays sharp. Granted, I probably need to sharpen it, but it's good for now. It's almost looking like a spoon. What do you think? Am I getting there? We're gonna put it off for now. Cause I gots to make this video. Ugh. All right, folks, it's time for me to selfishly plug my wife's blog. If you haven't checked out our website at lifeonbeagleroad.com, check it out. Each week, Courtney's been trying to put out a blog post and I feel kind of bad cause she puts a lot of work into it, and I'm not sure that she gets a whole lot of reads. Folks, Courtney's funny. She's got some stuff to say. I'd check out her blog. At the very least, do it for me, so that way I can live peacefully in my home. Please? Please? I think we talked about this before, but lately Courtney and I have been trying really hard to kind of clean up around here. When I say me and Courtney, obviously that just means me, not a whole lot of Courtney. Um, up here on the back end of our property, we used to have, what, a chicken coop, an old metal building, all kinds of stuff. And I've been trying really hard just to get it all kind of out of here. And it's, it's getting better. You know, things are, things are gone and it's looking a little nicer up here. I still have a lot of work. You know, I've got uh, this eyesore over here. That's where I keep all the wood that we're gonna burn. But then, you know, I got another one over there. I gotta get all that together and make it so it's not so ugly looking. Kinda wanna keep it all together. I built this woodshed thing right here, but in the end, it was way too small, way too small. So I gotta make another one. That one there was my first one. That was just made out of pallets and a random piece of metal for roofing and it's a mess. That's gotta go too. But we're getting there. Everything's a process, you know? Life on Beagle Road wasn't built in a day. Built in a lot of long days. You following me around again? You're always following me everywhere I go. Our chicken coop and chicken run are coming along quite nicely. I mean, mainly it's been the, uh, the run and I haven't really gotten to the coop yet. But I'll get there, slowly but surely. I'm feeling pretty good about it regardless. What do you need, ladies? Something I can help you with? Y'all just came running at me for no reason? What, now you don't wanna hang out? You gonna leave? Come on, let's hang out. Come on, no? Come on, why you gotta run away from me? That's not very nice. It'll be fine, we can all hang out. We'll have drinks, no? Just one or two. You know I'm 40 now, right? It's a special time for me. 
At least I still got you. six of the meat birds meaning after Friday we've got two more weeks to go a lot of you gave us some tips on butchering and uh, we haven't really talked about what our plan was for butchering see we don't have any of the infrastructure we don't have any of the infrastructure that we would need to actually butcher them but the guy that sells us hay had told us that you know I have a guy that we use uh, he butchers for two dollars a bird and it's you know he's pretty good and he's quick and he does a great job you know we moved forward based on the fact that we could find someone to do it for two dollars a bird except now we can't get a hold of that guy it's not returning any of Courtney's calls or my calls so we're stuck in a situation where we don't have anyone to butcher the birds and we don't have anything to use to butcher the birds and folks, this is why it's nice to make connections within the community. When we went to visit Bigfoot Farmer, he had offered to help us out. You need help with butchering too. We'll Absolutely. Come bring you heard that, Courtney, right? They're, they just volunteered to butcher our chickens. I heard the, he, he said help. I heard the word volunteer to do it, just so we're clear. Yeah, but thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate man, no it. Problem. Take care of yourself. Now, that seems like our only viable option at the moment. Other than, you know, just diving right in and paying for everything. The whole point of not getting it right now was that we were only going to do one round of birds until the spring. That gave us between the end of these birds and the beginning of our next birds, plus the, what, eight weeks that it would take for us to raise them to be able to raise the funds to take care of getting all that equipment, which I still want to stick with. I'm not trying to go broke right now, just trying to get all that equipment. That stuff's not cheap. And for those of you who have all that stuff, you know that. Now you could do it another way. Um, I know that there's folks out there that do it a little bit differently, but, but if you wanna be efficient, uh, you wanna do it well, and, and you don't want it to be problematic, it's good to have the stuff you need. A few years ago, we butchered six uh, really nasty roosters and we did it with out any of the tools that people use so I was carrying boiling water out uh, to where the birds were pouring it in a big giant uh, plastic bucket you know the birds were going in there the feathers weren't coming out all that great it took like two three people to get the feathers off and we didn't even get them that clean cutting their necks was an issue I, honestly, that, that just was not a humane way to take care of it. It didn't go well. I didn't really want any part of it. I think I went and hid in the shop because I was like, this isn't for me. Whatever. Point is, I don't want to go through that again. I want to do it right. I want it to be efficient. You know, I'm a big believer in you got to have the right tools to do the job right. Don't mess around without having the right tools. It's just the way I roll. Regardless of what's gonna happen in the next two weeks, I do wanna say I'm feeling good about these birds. They look healthy, everything's going well. I keep looking at them and my mouth starts to water and I can't help but think about all the chicken that I'm gonna be eating. Let's check on those chicken nuggets. Let's look at them. What's up chicken nuggies? What's up chicken nugget? You right there. You are gonna be dinner. You know that? Dinner. None of you are getting names because you're all gonna be dinner. Dinner number one. Dinner number two. Dinner number three. That's right. 
That's right. Don't look at me like that. You've had a great life. Your life is fantastic. You could have been in a chicken house. Instead, you're in here eating grass and bugs and way too much chicken feed. You look like you had all his chicken feed. That's right. The chicken tractor that we built, if you missed it, check out that whole build series. I think you'll enjoy it. It's the John Siskovich chicken tractor. I like it. Um, I can see why they use the feeder, the real long feeder that hangs in there. I still don't really want to walk in and fill it up, but I can understand why it's being used. These guys eat a ton of feed, and what I'm using does not hold enough feed, but I'm also coming out like two times a day. I move them two times a day. I fill their water two times a day. I'm okay with that. You do a morning and an evening, and I'm good. Some folks, they don't wanna be bothered by that. They have other things to do. I totally understand that. Our system so far has been working. We do a 24 hour feed instead of the 12 on and 12 off. I even let them out of here every once in a while and let them walk around. It all depends on whether or not the hawks are out because lately they've uh, been on fleek. It's getting a little crazy, but I'm happy and things are good. And I'm gonna have me some dinner. Chicken for dinner, chicken for dinner. We haven't gotten to the coop yet. The coop needs a ton of work and it's gonna get there. I have all the materials inside just waiting the tools are in there materials are in there it's getting there right now we're gonna work on finishing this guy if you watched and you followed along then you saw you know most of the build so far what I haven't filmed is putting in these posts right here this one here is for the door right there and there in each section here from there to there I put in some framing here and here. It doesn't really serve any other purpose except for me to nail in the hardware cloth. And we'll do hardware cloth four feet up and then two by four welded wire at the, the higher sections. It's looking pretty good. I feel pretty good about it. I didn't film cutting those nailers because it's just a lot of cutting and screwing, cutting and screwing. And I think you've watched me cut and screwed quite a bit. And I just don't think that that's a good use of your time. I will, however, film putting up the hardware cloth, putting on the door, and wrapping that sucker up. Because then, we're gonna do this guy. I'm like half excited and half like stressing out. I stress out about pretty much every project I have. I don't know why, I just do. Am I gonna do it right? Am I gonna screw up? Did I forget something? Is it gonna work out? Yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. I'm sure a lot of you are like that. You have some things where you get into it, get a little bit of stress about it. In the end, it's great. It'll be great. It'll be great. Also, big news, folks. Big, big news. So these were our old shirts. And quite a number of you have bought those. Thank you very much. But we're going to come out with some new shirts, which should be here right before the Homesteaders of America conference. They will have our new logo on them and they'll look a little bit like that. I don't know about you, but I want one of these shirts and I'm gonna buy one, even though they're mine, but I'm gonna buy it anyway, because that's kind of how it works, right? But hopefully you buy one too. I mean, seriously, folks, you need a shirt. You need a Life on Beagle Road t-shirt. You know you want a shirt. You got to get yourself a shirt. You gotta represent the goats. Represent the goats of Life on Beagle Road. If you've been following our channel, then you definitely know that we've got quite a number of pregnant does on the farm, which means I'm gonna have to build me some new kidding stalls. We started the whole barn process by cleaning it all up, reconfiguring parts of it, getting some electric in there, but we never really got to the kidding stalls part of it because well, we needed to get this coop and run done to get our chickens kind of squared away. They're crazy, they're everywhere, and I want them to be safe and have an actual home. Plus, I have absolutely no clue where they've been laying eggs. It's literally Easter here every day. I gotta go find them. I'm not having that. 
So that had to get done. Once that's complete, I've got to get over here and get these kidding stalls done. So that's going to be coming up in the future. And I've got some ideas so that way they can be broken down easily, reconfigured. That way if we have multiple pregnant goats at one time, we've got multiple stalls. If we've got one, we can have one giant stall. Something tells me we're never only going to have one pregnant goat. We're always going to have tons of pregnant goats because that's kind of how Courtney rolls. Get them all pregnant and talk about it all the time. Because apparently we need more goats. We don't need more goats, Courtney. We really don't. I'm just saying. Yes, baby, I will mention the website. I know you worked on it really, really hard and we haven't talked about it. Yes, I will. Yes, I'm pretty sure that I've already mentioned it about four or five times, but I will, I will get one more in there. Okay, I love you. Have fun in Atlanta. Try to behave. All right, love you too. Bye-bye. People, for the love of everything on Life on Beagle Road, please go to lifeonbeagleroad.com and check out Courtney's blog. Sign up for some updates. I don't know, whatever you got going on, do it over there. Otherwise, I'm probably not gonna eat when she comes home, unless I feed myself. And let's be real, I don't really do the greatest job of uh, making sure I feed myself, unless it's Oreos. I love me some Oreos. Have a great day, folks. See you on the next one. Peace. If you're brand new to Life on Beagle Road, we put videos out three times a week, every Tuesday, Thursday, and most of the time Saturday, maybe a Sunday. Guess it all depends on how life goes here. We are crafting the absolute best life we can for our family, and we're bringing you along with us. So come on back.